Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene Church today as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. In these trying times, as we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord from the dead, let us reflect more deeply on how God's presence is touching our lives. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the day rejoicing on the day of our resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exulted. My flesh too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, 
nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth, as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your feudal conduct, handed on by our ancestors, not with imperishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a spotless unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How the chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of them went to the tomb and found things just as the woman had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, oh, how foolish you are. How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted for them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it's nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way, and when he opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way 
and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the Gospel we just heard, we're told the story of two people walking on the road to Emmaus, a town outside of Jerusalem. One was named Cleopas, and the other was not named. Even though it was in the middle of the day, they were experiencing great darkness. They were dejected and literally disoriented. In other words, they were walking in the wrong direction. They were walking away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem was, and still is, spiritual east, oriens in Latin. Hence, they were disoriented or disoriented. Their focus was wrong. They were turned toward the west, toward the darkness, away from the light and away from the resurrection. Perhaps many of us, especially given the circumstances of today, are tempted to look the wrong way and become disoriented ourselves. We know because our faith tells us that we must always look toward heaven and never toward the darkness. Our hope must always remain in God. Then the scripture says, suddenly Jesus joined them and walked along. But the gospel says that their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. That was likely due to the fact that they were sorrowful and also because of their lack of faith. The gospel describes them as downcast. Sometimes in our anxiety and worry and in our uncertainty regarding the future, perhaps we can become too busy looking down that we forget to look up. Psalm 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. If they had lifted their eyes from their Dan Cal state, they might have become aware of who it was who was speaking to them. Instead, they chose to remain unaware of the saving presence of the very Lord that they were lamenting. Almost certainly, those two knew well because they spoke of it of many in the church that Jesus was alive and risen from the dead. They also knew the day on which Sunday's gospel story took place was, as they said, the third day. The third day was significant because in the ancient belief system, the spirit didn't leave the body completely until the third day. That was why Jesus waited three days to go and raise Lazarus from the dead. Cleopas and his companion were also sinfully stubborn in their disregard for the news that Jesus had risen from the dead. And like cowards, they left town. The two Emmaus walkers were unbelieving. They disregarded the evidence of the very thing that had been promised to them, the very thing in which they were supposed to find their hope. Often we do the same thing. Maybe some of us are tempted right now to doubt the promises and the hope that the Lord offers us. Facing the pandemic, we need to be careful lest we forget the countless blessings God has given us and indeed continues to give us. The gospel tells us that the Lord rebuked them. In English, Jesus called them foolish. But English gives it the wrong connotation. The Lord does not use the word foolish to mean stupid or bumbling like we do. Rather, he used the word at Paran, which means uninstructed. In Jesus' day, it meant specifically that you were uninstructed in biblical wisdom. The Lord rebuked them because they disregarded God's wisdom as was set forth for them in the Holy Scriptures. In other words, they were thinking like men think and not like God thinks. Just like we so often do as well, too easily we're tempted to become hesitant or slow of heart, to believe what we know to be true, as God teaches us in our hearts by faith. Thus on the road to Emmaus, the Lord decoded the events from which they were fleeing. He taught them from the word of God, what had been set forth about the Messiah. Nothing had gone wrong. Nothing was out of control. The pride of Satan was defeated 
by the humble suffering of Christ, the disobedience of man was replaced by the obedience of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. When we are tempted to be dismayed about the apparent but always short-term triumph of evil, we need to remember these words from 2 Corinthians. We are always carrying in our bodies the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. It may have seemed at the time like Satan prevailed and the cross won. Although many people hope that to be true, Satan did not win and neither did the cross, not even close. As evening drew near, the gospel tells us that their hearts were stirred by the the walk with the Lord, and they continued not to recognize him. But they invited him to stay with them nonetheless. And of course, we know he did. And while doing that, he shared a meal. Remember that in ancient times, meals weren't so much about food as they were about relationship. Meals were both a sign and a cause of greater intimacy and deeper relationships with the people at the table. But of course, the Emmaus dinner was no ordinary meal. It is eminently clear to people far smarter than I that the Emmaus story is man's. Two and then the three were gathered. The Lord was present but not recognized. There was instruction in his word and a teaching. Then a meal where the Lord took bread blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. Only then were their eyes open. Only then did they recognize him. And they recognized him as we do in the breaking of the bread. The breaking of the bread was the ancient Christian way of describing the most holy Eucharist. No Catholic can fail to recognize that familiar action or fail to recognize that that The Emmaus walk and the meal was the Eucharist. Two sad and downcast disciples joined with the Lord. As their load got lighter and their way got brighter, they finally recognized him who had never abandoned them in any case, in the least. It's important for us during these crazy days to recognize the Lord's presence in the breaking of the bread and to know that even in this current crisis, he is near, he is very near. Even though we are prevented at the moment from actually receiving communion, we must rely on the concept of spiritual communion and on our steadfast belief that the power of God's presence will keep us safe and strong and hopeful. Like Cleopas and his companions, no one goes away from the Lord unchanged even though sometimes we probably don't feel changed. We never, ever, ever go away from the Lord unchanged. Watching this Mass, you will not, and you do not go away unchanged. Know that the risen Lord is touching your lives and filling your hearts with his grace and with abundant, overflowing blessings. I believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, not substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. With humble faith, let us place our prayers in the hands of God. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Bishop Maluli, for Father Kirk, and for all who hold leadership positions in the church, that both they and we may be vehicles of God's mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people who are working to contain the spread of COVID-19, and for those who are caring for the sick, that God will watch over them and protect them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our teachers and all those who are staying committed to the education and formation of our children, that God will bless them let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, especially for those who suffer as a result of COVID-19, that they may feel the comforting presence of God in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our beloved dead, that they may enjoy the eternal peace of God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need. Hear the desires of those who cry to you and receive the prayers of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, the honor of the risen office of your church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts being offered may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, in Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with passable joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. 
and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. And that. Against us, 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be in you. Thank you. 